Hey folks, we're on uh, Chapawamsic Creek getting ready to launch, do a little bit of largemouth and snakehead fishing. We got Trey there, Marty Mood, and somewhere in the back is Scylla. Scylla Johnson. There she is. Um, I wanted to take a minute to do a little uh, public service announcement. Uh, something that has been uh, affecting me health-wise for the last three years is Lyme disease. And I had it really bad um, August three years ago. And looking back to when I, I got the tick bite, I didn't recognize it as such. I thought it was poison ivy down on my ankle. And it threw me for a loop. I sort of had flu-like symptoms, um, real bad headache, mental fog, joint pain, ears ringing, um, my vision was bad. It, it affected a lot of different parts of me uh, over the course of acutely for about three months. Um, it, the reason I'm bringing it up is I, when uh, Trey and I were down in Louisiana recently for the Kayak Bass Fishing National Championship, I got another bite right there. And it was embedded. The tick got up in there and was really digging in. It's actually looking okay now because um, I'm, I'm taking antibiotics. But my point is, my point of bringing it up is to be vigilant, look for ticks and, and get them off of you. And if you get sick and have weird symptoms that, that maybe don't even make sense to you, um, don't just go to your regular doctor. The regular, most doctors will treat with doxycycline for three weeks and if it doesn't make you better, uh, they just kind of say, well, we've treated for Lyme, therefore you don't have Lyme, you have something else. Uh, the CDC has actually said Lyme disease is the most, uh, recently they said the, the most misdiagnosed ailment um, that's out there. Uh, they have, I think they estimated 300 thousand new cases in 2018 so it's something that uh that you know people say oh my knees hurt it's just old age or or they attribute it to something else um what i would i would encourage you if you do think you have lyme disease symptoms if you've got bitten by a tick um certainly go to your doctor but if they they don't do anything more than um three weeks of antibiotic you have to be real aggressive over a period of um in my case many years um, and I still didn't get rid of it um, what you need to do is to find a Lyme literate physician uh, there's certain physicians that really understand the disease more than others and um, they do some holistic treatments uh, like herbal supplements uh, in conjunction with antibiotics and probiotics um, but take care of yourself you know really get aggressive because it, it really made me miserable for uh, the better part of about three or four months and on and off I've had other symptoms so just wanted to put it out there because I know a lot of you folks are in the woods and on the water uh, in in you know you're your folks that are more likely to, to get the Lyme disease than others so Get aggressive, find a Lyme literate physician to take care of it if you think that's what it is. And um, yeah, that's it, take care. All right, we're getting ready to launch here. I'm gonna have Scylla, since this is her home water, give us a little bit on uh, on real common patterns, things that you've, what have you caught them on up here this time of year and maybe even a little bit later? Um, Chatterbaits normally, um, there's nothing really growing right now. Um, spatter docks normally all out there in the grass beds and I'll run a quarter ounce chatterbait above the grass beds. They usually just sitting in there um, and they'll attack them and the big bass are, are getting those too. So um, usually when I hear anything fast, loud. Uh, buzz baits take the skirt off, I'll throw a soft body frog on those. Um, hollow body frogs, tackle frogs, obviously my favorite. Tackle. Um, tackle. Yeah. Yeah, I the tackle sprinkler. Um, it'll it'll Marty, push through those pads Marty and grass. Turned, turned me on to them last year. <laughs> so that, um, if you can find some good holes in here, you can throw some uh, some um, Texas rigged creature baits or Senkos with maybe like a quarter ounce uh, bullet weight on there just to kind of help it get down. But yeah, that's basically what I've cool. done really well out here with. There's a whole lot of two to three foot deep water out here that still is right. Normally you have, you know, a, a lot of vegetation popping up and that's what they hold on. But I think it's early season yet 
there isn't much vegetation. Um, we're going to have to look for creek channels, pieces of wood, or whatever we can find. That I, I do see a steep bank over there. It looks, looks nice. But places they would be staging on to, to come up shallow. Uh, whereas everything is shallow here, I don't know. We're going to have to have to find some interesting uh, depth contours and, and structure and cover. So I'm making a run and we're going to look at the, the chart here. What I'm heading for, we have a lot of shallow area out here. Actually, yeah, we're in two feet of water. Um, but I'm heading over towards this bank. See, you have shallow, like really shallow here, and then shallow. Uh, but where this point comes out is what we have, you know, fairly, I'm hoping it's deeper water right in there. You know, that contour line doesn't gradually uh, come up. And I think that point is right in there. You know, if you look at the, the bank contour, it's a, it's a taller hill that comes down, and I would think some wood in particular on that bank is going to be real productive because uh, it's you know you got the creek mouth coming out down there so fish coming in from the river they're going to come up the creek channel and uh, they're going to hug tight to wood until it gets warm enough and then they're going to jump shallow and find places to spawn but it starts with you know making a run to the steep bank and hopefully we find some that steep bank with some wood. Once we find that wood, I'm gonna put this uh, Z-Man Palmetto Bugs on it. Uh, I, I did well with these, with this down at uh, in Louisiana. They had a nice wide body, you know, that, that has a good compression rate for good hookup with a sharp hook. Uh, the one thing I'm doing differently on this rig than what I had down in Louisiana is I, I have the bobber stop there. So it's not quite pegged, it's just enough movement that that 3 16th ounce tungsten weight can click with that little, I got a little disc there. So we got a little bit of, little bit of a noise maker there, clicking, clicking along on bottom. So see if that, that doesn't get their attention. Just kind of winding that along some of the wood. We got a little bit right up here. All right, <clears throat> on wood, on a steep bank, not a big fish, but a fish, a start. Finding the dinks today. Gotta keep moving until I find better fish. This is not one of them. That's not a dink. Nope, nope, nope. That's a good fish. All right. Same kind of area, right on the wood. Let's see what he is. He's up there, Bubba. Yeah. Close mouth, swing the tail. Yeah, 16 and a half. It's a better fish. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, then that tongue up. That's okay. Yep. Oh, I need pliers for that one. Um, sort of blind casting where I think there might be wood. I didn't know for sure that I did have wood there. But there's a lot of wood in this little area. So even though you can't see it on the surface, you gotta have some faith and... chunk. I gotta get that net unstuck. I'm not quite, it's a 17, not quite 
Um, totally situated for my bass fishing in this. And I used to have my net up front. And being in the back, caught the peckle frog. Don't quite have everything down pat yet. I'll get there. All right, so I connected with four bass, and uh, Silly, you, you said you got into a snakehead? Got into a snakehead, uh, hit my rattle trap, and came out of the water. So I did get, a, get to see it. It was a nice one. How long do you think it was? Oh, oh Marty's on him. Uh-oh. Let's go. He doesn't have a net, so. All right. <laughs> All right. That, that's a sign that. Yep. Good one, man. Nice. Another jackhammer. Early spring bass. Have to charge you for this Another hefty little springtime. You got one night. earlier that was pretty big. One earlier was actually a little bigger than this one. Nice. Um, she was all tore up. She was uh, up in a tree and she had all kind of marks all over. This one was actually way up in a tree as well. That's about a half inch shorter and I don't know, maybe just a hair less weight. She's still got a she been eating pretty good. Yep. On, on what? On what did you catch it on? I got it on the jack. Got them both on the jackhammer right. again. First time I've used it. Nice. With any, uh, you gave it any time, and I pulled them both through right up in cover and up in the treetop, and uh, a lot of people won a lot of money on that bait. Yeah. Very cool. This one jumped all over. About as soon as it hit, I threw way up in the tree, and uh, they're sticking out shallow water right as it come off in the deep i threw way up in the top i didn't get two cranks on the reel handle and she thumped it and i had to pull her up over a branch uh to get her up out of there but yeah she really she thumped it hard nice job man All right. so marty caught a nice one there and uh we'll get back to to catching them here in a second but i know you, you do a lot of work with veterans in the area you want to talk a little bit about that i do um so I work with uh, Bravo Zulu Outdoors. Carl and Don Schwartz uh, used to work with our local uh, George Washington chapter of um, Heroes on the Water, and they decided to uh, start their own um, group. And so it's been really good. Um, they, they work with the therapy programs from Quantico, Fort Belvoir, um, occasionally Walter Reed. Um, they have good relationships with Patriot, the folks over at Patriot Point um, that run, um, it's owned by USO and the and, um, the military bowl so we do a lot with uh, not just the vets active um, duty um, veterans but also their families um, we, we do a lot of overnights usually there's about about 16 um, trips that we plan a year um, so we, we provide them with all the gear um, the kayaks the gear we feed them um, mission barbecue comes out a lot feeds them nice um, so it's been it's been a good experience for me to be able to go out and you know sometimes the folks know how to fish and sometimes they don't so it's it's nice to So how can someone find out about helping out? Um, we have a Facebook group, um, Bravo Zulu Outdoors, or BZO. Um, website is bravozuluoutdoors.com, um, which is currently under construction. So um, this is our first year, um, just getting into our first season. Um, we've done some uh, shore cleanup uh, for Widewater State Park, um, but our, our events are going to really start picking up here, I believe, uh, for the Shad Run um, that are coming up in the area. That's a but lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, yeah. The kids really like it, especially when they double up. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've gotten into them at Fletcher's, below Conowingo, mm -hmm. and then down on the Rappahannock. Yeah. Um, just in Fredericksburg. Yeah, so all good three fight. Areas are Freshwater tarpon. Yeah. Good times. Good <laughs> all right. Yeah. What is it? Large mouth. Nice. So you're clipping them yep. until you can get your board out? Yeah, I put them just so they don't get too, uh, kind of relaxes them. Right. I put, I put them in there, let them relax a little bit, and uh, get my all my stuff ready, my phone ready, my tag ready. What do you got, 17? 17. I 
All right, so the fish I caught today, I'm a good old trusty Z-Man, big TRD. Um, I rig these on the uh, power finesse hook um, just because the, um, the other um, Z-Man net heads have a, a smaller profile hook. So this um, attracts the bigger fish, um, it has a better chance hookup. Um, and I throw this on the loose um, Ned rig rod. So it's actually specifically made for Ned rigs. There's a lot of tip action, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it's very sensitive. Um, it's a medium light. Um, and I pretty much only throw my Ned rig on that. So um, this is about the third hookup I've had with the same bait this week. This bait's probably about a year old. It's, it's got some, it's usually whiter underneath. It's a little yellow now from the, uh, from the stained water, but uh, it's holding up. It's like it's brand new. It's obviously still catching fish. So um, the big TRDs I find catch the bigger ones and, and the deal is definitely one of my favorite colors. So yeah. Scylla's got number three from the same spot. Is that one bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah it is. You're letting her chill. God, she's fat. Almost 18. 18. This one's big. Yeah. I didn't bring my scale today, but uh, she is. You want her now? I got a bokeh. Do you? Yeah. yeah Let me get it. Let's do it. All right. Four pounds. Again, Z-Man TRD, the deal. Um, all three fish I've caught today, um, I think, what did I have? A 17, two 17s, I think. And then this was 18 and right under 18 and a half. Um, all in the same spot, all with a Z-Man TRD, big TRD deal so we just weighed this one she is she is a chunk and uh four pounds right on the nose so we're gonna let her go All right, we've had a pretty good day. Still has had a really good day. Yeah, you got some nice, nice fish for your uh, the monthly challenge. Yep, it's under 60 inches, so cool. Good job. Um, but I appreciate you getting the the Vibe Sea Ghost 130 for us to to rig up. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Trey will have that mount, uh, that adapter piece at Innovative Sportsman for sale here pretty shortly. So yes. I'm glad it's worked out I'm, for I'm you. I'm extremely happy with the. Uh, the adapter plate that he that he put on here it's nice and small and streamlined and uh the performance um already on this boat versus the yellow fin that i had on um with my own mount uh is, is a huge difference so I'm, I'm extremely happy nice yeah well we'll have to get back out here when uh when the Absolutely. snakeheads are I'm ready. a little more cooperative almost she, had one today she got one on the line yeah they're a lot of fun they are a lot of fun thanks Zilla. thank you Appreciate it. Had to take a few casts on the way back and uh, see if we get the snakehead going. And we got him. <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, fishy. Hello, snakehead. He's already jumped once real good. Let's see if I can. Very nice. And he's out. He's he, just like that. He's unhooked. He's he's in the net, but he's unhooked, so he's liable to jump right out of here. That, I got him on the boca. There we go. They're so nice. pretty. Good job. Here, let me get on the other side to get, get, get better light. Hello, Slimy. You stay there. I'll, I'll go. 
He jammed the, the chatterbait. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all right in here. Do it good. Oh yeah. It's probably she's probably about what three pounds? I don't know. Uh three and a half, four. No, she's over four. She's uh like four ten. She's over four and a half. It's on onto the next one. So that's a four pound ten ounce nice. snakehead. It was twenty, just shot twenty five inches. Trey, you want that one? Yes. Take it home. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna. He's looking at his top over there. He's gonna want it. Alright, you got this your cooler? That's why I wouldn't come over uh, there with you guys because I'm like, okay. Alright, well, then I have to dispense with it because you cannot transport these live. Right. And he's objecting to that idea. He's like, no. No, 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 no. Do not dispense with me. Do you have a bat? I got a, I got this. That uh, point right there where the. Dinner. <laughs> I'd keep it in the. Put it in the net. Oh, you're gonna put it in the net. Because I always just put it in the net.